tea was more than just an ordinary afternoon sort of affair in the kingdom of Sipso Sweetly. It was positively a state function. Ah, oh, yes, it was. The king and queen would as soon have thought of missing their own coronation as missing their tea. There were eight kinds of bread and butter and 16 kinds of cake, ranging from the very plain and wholesome to the terribly indigestible and delicious. The tea service was gold, except the teapot, and that was a lovely big brown earthenware one known as Brown Betty. The Queen declared that it was the only kind of pot that made good tea. It had the royal arms on the inside as well as the outside because the Queen was so specially thorough that she couldn't bear to think the things you didn't see weren't as nice as those you did. She always washed her neck much further than was really necessary. She insisted on all the cupboards being tidy inside. And she even had her shoes polished on the soles, which was rather awkward sometimes, because they made her slither about on the carpet. Still, she had learned to skate ages ago, so she managed to sliver very majestically. I declare I'm simply gasping for a cup of tea, said Her Majesty one day when it was getting half past four-ish. My dear, ought you to gasp? asked the king. He was known as King Nethercup the Second because it sounded rather nice and royal, but his real name was Leslie Jones. I mean to say, it's not very majestic, is it? It may not be very majestic, Leslie, but it's most exceedingly and very true, said she, and rang the bell for tea so hard that all the servants came hurrying in at once. No, 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 no. I didn't ring for all of you. You know perfectly well I only ring once for the butler, twice for the footman, three times for the maids, four times for the cook, and so on. Pardon, Majesty, said the butler, bowing so low, that a pack of picture cards he was collecting from tea packets fell out of his waistcoat pocket all over the floor and were picked up by the first and second footman. We were not sure if you were ringing once a lot of times, or twice not so many times, or three times several times, or... Oh, go away, all of you, cried the Queen, shooing them out like a lot of chickens. I rang for tea, so please hurry up with it. She sat down and went on gasping to herself, while the King tried to make up his mind whether to have plain, wholesome cake, which was good for him, but which he didn't much like, or delicious, creamy pastries, which he loved, but which gave him pains. Then in came tea, with the button all of a tremble, but trying not to show it, because the most terrible of things to occur, he had chipped a bit off the spout of the Queen's brown Betty. Perhaps Her Majesty won't notice it, he thought. It's only a weedy little chip. So he rubbed a chocolate eclair on the chipped part to make it dark like the rest of the teapot. And he was hoping for the best and wondering how he could prepare for the worst, not knowing what the worst might be. The Queen began to pour out. And goodness gracious, how awful! The chipped spout of the brown Betty made the tea dribble all over the tablecloth and all over her robes. For a moment there was silence except for the drip, drip, drip of the tea on the carpet. The butler came over so queer, the footman had to give him back the tea packet cards, but still he felt no better. Oh, oh, disgraceful! screamed the Queen, jumping up and putting the teapot down with such a bang that three lumps of sugar jumped out of the bowl into the King's tea, which he didn't mind at all because the Queen never gave him much sugar anyway. Look at my lovely robes, moaned the Queen. And oh, look, look at my lovely tablecloth, the one that Aunt Chrissy made for me with her own hands too. Not that she could have made it with anyone else's hands, but oh dear me, I should cry. I know I shall. But she didn't cry. She went on talking and wailing and moaning and wringing her hands while the footman began wringing the tablecloth to get the dribbled over tea out of it. If there's one thing I cannot stand, it's a teapot that dribbles, cried the Queen. Oh, and that one was such a beautiful porter. I can't understand what can have happened. The butler could understand perfectly well, but he simply dare not tell the Queen about chipping the spout. So he said, I will fetch another teapot, Majesty. He fetched the best silver pot that was never used. 
but that was so ancient it was part of the crown jewels of Sipso Sweetly or something for years and years. It was full of holes and dribbled in all directions instead of only at the spout. Oh, get me a teapot that don't dribble, cried the Queen, gasping more than ever for her tea and not caring whether it was majestic or otherwise. Yes, yes, majesty, said the butler. He brought the kitchen teapot, which was enamel and always had dribbled. Only the cook had held a bit of sponge under it. He bought a toy teapot from the little princess's toy cupboard, but that had no spout. And he bought two little ornamental sort of teapots with a present from Brighton written on them. And they didn't dribble because they were solid right through, so they couldn't dribble anyway. Oh, 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 this is terrible, cried the Queen. Not a teapot in palace that could be used. Oh, disgraceful. I must have a pot that don't dribble. I must, I must. Half the kingdom will be the reward for anyone who can bring me a teapot that pours without dribbling. Here, 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 half a mo, cried the king, getting all flurried and agitated and forgetting to speak regally. You can't do that. What do you think's going to happen to ship so sweetly if you go offering half of it for teapots? But it was too late. The Royal Herald, who was a fearfully anxious to please sort of person, had dashed out the minute the Queen said, Half the kingdom will be the reward for a teapot that pours without dribbling. And before he could be caught and told to stop, he'd shouted the proclamation all round the city. The king was in a dreadful state, so he went to the magician, the court magician, Throbbly Wobbly, whose real name was Adrian. This is terrible aid. The Queen has offered half the kingdom for a teapot that pours without dribbling and the proclamation's all over the town. What can we do? Can't you unproclamate it or something? Alas, no, Majesty, throbbed the court magician, offering the king a pack of cards and asking him to take one and not say which one it was. But the king couldn't be bothered with conjuring sort of things, so he smacked the cards up in the air into a shower where they all turned into birds and flew out of the window, except the one that the magician was going to make the king take, and that became a piece of gingerbread, which the magician swallowed at one go while smoke came out of his ears. Oh, yes, I see, said the king, who didn't see at all, really, and began to think magic was a bit overrated. Depend on me, Majesty, said the magician, producing a cup of cocoa from his hat and beginning to sip it. I will find a way to save the kingdom. So the king had to be satisfied with that. And the magician sat up all night reading the most unlikely books and practicing unheard of incantations. The next morning, the grounds of the palace were packed with people. It was like Lord Mayor's Show Day and Boat Race Day and Cup Final and Coronation Day and Royal Garden Party and opening of Parliament all at once. Everybody in the kingdom seemed to be there. And everybody had brought at least one teapot. Most of them had bought several. One or two of them had bought simply cart loads of teapots. There were teapots of every size, shape and colour. Enormous teapots for the most elaborate tea parties and tiny, teeny, weeny little personal teapots for teeny, weeny tea in bed. Some of the pots didn't even look like teapots and one that did look most extravagantly like a teapot wasn't a teapot at all but a tremendous imitation one as big as a bath that used to hang outside the chief tea shop. There now, exclaimed the king. Now do you see what you've done with your offer of half the kingdom for a teapot? Look at them. Look at all the teapots. Unless I'm greatly mistaken, practically every one of those teapots will pour without dribbling. And now we're going to give away absolutely hundreds of halves of kingdoms. And what we're going to do with absolutely hundreds of teapots with none of the kingdom left to put in them, I do not know. Oh, it's terrible. His Majesty went downstairs and consulted with the Prime Minister. There's only one thing to do, Majesty, said the Prime Minister. We must let them bring all their teapots in and make tea in them and see if they pour without dribbling. Oh, yes. And suppose they all pour without dribbling, asked the king, throwing out his hands and hunching up his shoulders and raising his eyebrows all at once. The Prime Minister didn't get a chance to answer that, for just then in swept the Queen. 
Now then, she said firmly, I'm going to find a pot that don't dribble. Whatever else happens now, tell them to bring in their teapots. So the people began to come in with their teapots. The first pot was handed to the king, who gave it to the butler, who made tea in it and handed it to the queen, who poured out from it. It dribbled all over the place. More tea was made in the second pot, and that dribbled worse than the first. And the third and fourth and fifth and sixth, and goodness knows how many teapots had tea made in them and tea poured from them, and goodness gracious, would you believe it, all of them dribbled. Thank goodness, exclaimed the king to himself. Oh, if only they all dribble, we are saved. By this time, the pots were being filled with tea and poured out a dozen or so at a time, the footmen and parlourmaids helping the queen and holding three pots in each hand, but still they dribbled. The floor was swimming in tea. The Prime Minister took his shoes and stockings off to save them getting wet. Everywhere was getting squishy as squishy. Oh dear, oh dear, this is awful, sobbed the Queen. Oh, shan't I ever get a pot that don't dribble? At last, every single teapot had been tried and every single one dribbled most horribly. The people went home all disappointed and puzzled and made themselves tea at home and found their teapots poured out quite all right, without dribbling. It was most mysterious. Well, said the king, as the last person left the palace, that saves the kingdom anyway, though I must say, it seems to have ruined the carpet. But my teapot, oh, my teapot, wailed the queen. Oh, I'd do anything to have a teapot while paws without dribbling. Your majesty said a voice. They all turned. It was the magician. Listen, the reason your majesty's brown Betty dribbled was because the butler quite accidentally chipped a weeny bit off the spout. The queen interrupted. Oh, off with his head. But the, but the king very hurriedly said, no, 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 shush, please, wait a minute. Only just in time to prevent the herald rushing off for the executioner. The magician went on. I couldn't magic the proclamation away once it had been proclamated. There are some things even a magician can't do. That's one of them. So in order to save the kingdom from being given away in halves all over the place, I laid a spell on all the teapots in the kingdom to make them dribble. Oh! said the queen again. She was just going to cry off with his head when she remembered. Every time his head came off, he put it on again. He was almost doing it at parties. Now, Your Majesty, I'm sure you will realise the butler didn't mean to chip the brown Betty teapot. And if you agree not to do anything nasty to him, I will just do a small magic and mend the brown Betty so that it will pour without dripping. Yes, 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 I agree. Hurry up, said the Queen eagerly. So the brown Betty was brought in and the magician did his small magic. Then tea was made in the brown Betty. I'll bet it dribbles said the Prime Minister, who had begun to believe that all teapots would always dribble forevermore. He'd seen so many of them doing it. The Queen picked up the brown Betty and poured out a cup of tea. The teapot didn't dribble as much as a spot. She poured out cup after cup after cup and not one dribble did the brown Betty drib. Well, thank goodness for that, exclaimed the King. While the Queen, who thought it rather a shame, after all, to have disappointed everybody about half the kingdom, had a coloured picture of herself and the King sent to everyone who had brought a teapot. And some of them hung their picture in the dining room and some in the bedroom. Some hung it upside down because they weren't sure which way it ought to go. And some kept it to frighten their children when they were naughty, which wasn't very polite for King and Queen. But perhaps it wasn't a very good picture. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you.